everyone welcome to today's video welcome to the gamer dad channel thank you very much for tuning in the division two is now at least in its third year in a sense i mean 2019 20 21 and then we are approaching 2022 where we're looking at a three-year lifespan of this game so far the game is still being supported now to the capacity to which it's being supported. Obviously, it's in a very lower side of things because Ubisoft has got their hands in multiple jars. So Division naturally has taken the back burner. Now, this is something that I'm willing to stick with in a sense. I'm willing to live with this because we already had our prime. We had when the game released in 2019, March, we had Warlords of New York come out somewhere around March of 2020. And we got the benefit of those two different uh, fresh aspects of the game. Now, I will say Warlords of New York was quite dramatic. There was a lot of issues in the community. I think what happened, in my opinion anyways, was a lot of um, sour relationship destroying between the community and developers and even decision makers. Decision makers decided that they were going to go ahead and roll back progress for people who they thought or their systems thought were cheating. And in some cases, they went ahead and pretty much ignored even, oh my gosh, even some of the people who were actually obviously cheating. And this was a really big deal. It really did hurt a lot of a lot of the trust in the community. In fact, I think a lot more trust was eroded in that time than even on the release of the Division 1 in a broken and buggy state. I think even then we could still say there was still a dedicated community that was willing to stick with the game. And Warlords of New York basically threw that away. Now, I don't necessarily understand what that was. I think maybe there was, in my opinion anyways, this uh, level of um, newness between the team that a lot of the team that did Division 2 and some of the team that did Division 1. There was a rumor one time that did say that there was a little bit of uh, infighting, not infighting in a sense, but uh, a weird tussle in, within the studio as to how to go about the punitive measures for people who cheated. And some people said that they would, you know, be for banning and, you know, if not even rollbacks, while some other studio members in terms of developers and some decision makers did not want anybody to get banned or, you know, punished. Instead, maybe just something like rolling back for seven days, but they got that suspension. And so all of that was just kind of in a really weird place. I think if you kind of go back and look at it, you probably, you know, will have to say that some of the developers or decision makers were not necessarily in a position to understand how the relationship between Division One and the community had already fostered. There was a really strong relationship when the Division One came out with the devs. And I think that kind of, in a sense, was diluted by the time most of that team went over to develop Avatar. So if you kind of compare with, say, Bungie and even, you know, Massive, you're going to see some streaks of similarity in the way that they handle their games. But Bungie has a much more lax way of dealing with the community in a sense. I remember I've heard also that, you know, Bungie, you know, discovered that there were these bugs that people were exploiting. They made a joke about it. They patched it and everybody moved on. But in the case of The Division, we didn't see that or The Division 2 anyways, we didn't see that benefit. And I think that benefit, you know, was something that was available as, uh, you know, a relationship piece more than anything else. Now, yes, you know, if anybody was cheating at that time or using a hack, you know, many people have admitted that, you know, they deserved to be suspended and, you know, the rollbacks deserve to happen. But the fact that they did not apply that, you know, fairly is already a terrible aspect. Now, bringing it into the third year, I wonder how things are going to, you know, shape out. Right now, for those of us who are still playing, we just definitely understand that there is a really huge side of this game where it might be that a division receives some sort of the Ghost Recon treatment. And when I mean the Ghost Recon treatment, I mean probably the way Ghost Recon Breakpoint was in a really interesting place. And then they eventually added a huge aspect of content that seemed, you know, a little rehashed nonetheless. I mean, some people have said, you know, it didn't seem like they did anything big or anything new. And that's just the truth. The game had already come out, you know, a while ago before that. So what kind of content were you expecting to see from, say, Ubisoft? It's not like they were trying to pull a Final Fantasy 14. I think they were just trying to do right by the community before they added their cryptocurrency. <laughs> 
<laughs> I'm just being silly, folks. But that's what it seemed to me because first they drop that content and then next thing you know, they're having this conversation about NFTs and Ubisoft courts. So I guess every time you see Ubisoft do something in that nature, the publisher anyways, uh, you have to also understand that they probably have an ulterior motive in a sense to profit themselves. So as gamers, we've learned to kind of just take everything with grains of salt in terms of that. But with The Division, I think we continue, we need to continue to have these conversations. Why? Because I know the developers are listening and we need to continue to remind them like, yo, you promised content. And this content piece is not only just something that you promise, it's something that you're tying into the future of how you're going to resonate with your community. Sure, they are. they have other games that they're making and those other games may have fan bases, but there is a community, there's a dedicated set of players who play The Division 2 who would not mind, and I'm sure there are a few million of them, who would not mind patronizing other games that are made by Massive. Me, personally, I'm one of those millions. I mean, maybe one or two million of us. And I think one of the really interesting things is Massive's game design is something that I really do appreciate. For some who have said, I don't have any interest in Avatar, and you say things like, I, but I love The Division 1, and you're like, uh, it's like saying you love some of Van Gogh's uh, you know, work and don't love some of his other work. And that's fine. But some people are more of, in that sense, looking and saying, okay, if the team that developed the Division 1 is doing or working on Avatar, then it only goes to show that there perhaps needs to be some consideration on their part to actually check that game out. So me, I'm going to Avatar with the expectation of the quality that the Division 1 had. But it's kind of contingent on how Massive carries on in the next few months. I think it's going to really sound, you know, it's, it's going to really say a lot because even though it may be a different team that's actually working on a Division 2, the other team needs to be aware, very aware, not just, you know, simply aware of exactly what it is that they're standing at the precipice of. Now, even with that being said, they also have to look again at the Star Wars game because when people are examining this new Star Wars game that they're working on, even though it may be from, you know, for a few years down the road, they're still going to go ahead and look at, in some cases, some people will go ahead and look at the resume of Drew and Garrity. So Drew and Garrity, I don't know, I think you're probably working on Star Wars. If you ever watch this video, you need to give Yannick and Cole the nudge and say you guys need to do well because there is a cascading effect down the road. You want things to resonate well so that it can actually do well overall for the rest of the studio. The success of Massive continues to rest on the laurels and even right now on how the perception of the Division 2 community sees the game. And already there are people who have, you know, checked out and signed out. Now that is their choice. I get it. But some of us, we understand. I guess we kind of do. I've picked up a game engine before. I've programmed slightly what a shooter game can look like. I've programmed slightly what an RPG game can look like. So I get it. Some of us get it in this community as to how challenging what it is you guys are undertaking is. But nonetheless, you have to make sure that you deliver at the time that you've actually said you would, which is basically no time right now. And we understand the producers have already said, you know, we made the decision to move the content far down the road. And, I, you know, I'm sure that there's a legitimate reason for that. But nonetheless, we'll keep an eye out here in the community. We'll continue, to you know, the conversation. I would love to hear your thoughts in the comment section just to see exactly and gauge where many people are regarding the Division game, the future Avatar game and even the Star Wars game. Appreciate you guys so much for rocking with me. Thanks so much for watching the video. Hopefully we'll talk soon. Peace out.